Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to another Bible study with the daughters of Sarah. Today's lesson topic is on poor man, rich man. This is what the Most High said unto the people who were robbing the poor during this time. Matthew 21, verse 13. And I said unto them, It is written, My house should be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. The Bible does not state or teaches us what these ministers of Satan are teaching about being poor and rich. The false prosperity gospel only teaches on wealth and health concerning success in this demonic and sinful world. This seed sowing gospel preached by many Christian ministers today is a controversial religious belief among Christians who state that financial blessing and good health, good physical health is the only will of the Most High for them who pay tithes and give a huge amount of offerings. They also believe that you can think and speak things into existence, such as material things or anything your heart may desire. This false gospel is not just a lie, it is clearly a Christian tradition. The founders of such traditions were first introduced by two philosophers during the mid 19th century. The two popular untraditional thinkers who started this spiritual movement was Ralph Waldo Emerson, who was an American journalist, professor, theorist, and poet that led the, trans, the Transcendentalist movement, best known as self-reliance, while heavily capitalizing, capitalized on trusting and believing in oneself, which heavily my fault, capitalized on trusting and believing in oneself. The other philosopher was William James, who was a psychologist and a theorist who had a major influence, influence on the development of psychology in the United States. He is referred to as the father of American psychology. As you can see, these men believe that people can only be deemed worthy in how they apply such a principle like self-reliance. It is through this concept that one is only deemed worthy when they put 100% faith within themselves and their wealth. This method of teaching is being taught in the mainstream Christian churches of Satan to this day. These so-called Christian leaders is selling the congregation on the idea that their money can buy them a place into heaven and receive an abundance of blessings when they are only being robbed of their money and salvation. They also have the congregation thinking that the more money they give to their pastors and ministers, false preachers of Satan, the more blessings and debts free they will be, thinking that they will gain all the worldly goodness goods and their they desire, all the worldly goods they desire. These hosts of Satan want the people and their congregation to support their lifestyle so that they can have more material goods and money and money. This is what the Bible has to say about the rich man who has the spirit of pride and greed. James 5, verse 1 through 5. So go so go to now, ye rich man, weep and howl for your misery that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupt, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against, against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye heap treasures together for the last day. Behold, the heart of the labors who have reaped down your fields, which of you keep back by fraud, cries, and the cries of them which have reaped your interest into the ears of the, of, of the Lord. Saw above. Ye have lived in pleasure on this earth and have been wanting. Ye have nourished your heart as in the days of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just. He does not resist you. These verses are simply demonstrating how such vile men gain and live a rich and wealthy life off the backs, blood, sweat, and tears of the poor, to which they give no regards. For example, there was a woman who worked for a well-known fast food company. One morning, she was scheduled to open the store at 5.30 a.m. in the morning. Upon opening the store, she was murdered by someone who was trying to rob the store. The very next day, the store was open for business without even respecting the fact that a woman had just been murdered 
working long hours making thousands of dollars for their franchise. They could not even pay her or her family respect by closing the doors for one day. Proverbs 22, 16 said, He that oppressed the poor to increase his riches should surely, become, come, surely come to want. Rob not the poor because he is poor, neither oppress the affliction in the, in the gate. For the Lord shall please their cause and spoil the soul of those of those spoil them. Of those that spoil them. For example, I have seen a single I have seen single mothers with two or more children paying their tithes and giving offerings to these greedy devils, while at the same time trying to struggle to maintain their household. I have witnessed these false preachers taking money from the sick. They give all their life savings to these preachers who say that they have the power to heal them. These poor people die from the same illness says that they claim they have healed in exchange for their life savings. This is what the Bible say about being rich. There is no, there is nothing wrong with being rich as long as it does not take the place of the Most High and the love and compassion you feel for your fellow men. One righteous way to acquire a livable life is by obtaining it through a good honest living, not by covetousness, pride, lying, greed, deceiving, and making merchandise of people by making them think that, that you are looking out for their well-being and spiritual growth. It takes a low kind of person to hustle, manipulate, and take advantage of those who are systematically at a disadvantage by design, just so that you can live a comfortable life that you haven't earned but feel you worthy of. Wake up, Israel. When the Most High return, they will receive their judgment for deceiving the poor and depriving them of their humanity. Remember what the Most High said, Call not your brother Raka, meaning a fool, or you will be in, da in danger of hellfire. What do you think you're doing when you're preaching that false gospel to your sisters and brothers and robbing them of their living and eternal life? You're calling them Raka. 2 Peter, verse 2. 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. But these were false prophets among, also among the people, even as there should be a false prophet among you, who probably should bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bringing upon them self swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom they, excuse me, by reason of whom the way of truth should be either spoken of, and through com Covetousness, covetousness and through covetousness should they with firmer words make merchandise of you who judgment now of a long time linger not and their damnation slumber not this is Clefto Dollar theme words that he uses to make merchandises of of you re, of you we have we have we've been freed from lack and insufficient because God wants us to prosper financially as well as in every other area of our lives. Prosperity means to experience such to thrive, flourish, and be strong in health. Give me your money in this life so you can be rich in the next life. Praise the Lord. These children of Satan give you a divine sanctification to be greedy by telling you what you want to hear, such as the reason you have the Mercedes or how you are are debt free, that you have received spiritual power or blessed with material things and tell you that it is all because God loves you. Luke twelve fifteen says, and he said it unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. A man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possess. And he spoke parables unto them saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself saying, what shall I do because I have no room where to besought my feet. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barn and build greater, and there will I besought all my feet and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, that I have much good, lay up for many years, take, heat, take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And God said unto him, thy fool, this night thy soul should be required to thee. Then who shall those things be which thou have provided? So he is, so is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. The rich man dies th that same night and could not take anything with him. The only thing he could take with you with with him 
when you only thing you could take with you when you leave this world of the living is your relationship you had with the most high and your fellow man and the judgment that you will receive whether it be bad, good or bad for you that is why it is so important in this life for you to repent and keep the most high's commandments and statutes not worrying about money and what it can buy Hebrew 9.27 says, And it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. This is, this is the story about a poor man and a rich man, and what happens to the both of them when they die. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and furred consumption every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of swords. Desiring to be fed from the crumbs from the rich that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. But it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off and, Ab and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thy in thy day in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and Lazarus likewise, Lazarus evil things, but now he is comfort, and thy art tormented. And besides all this, between us, you there is a great gulf fixed so that they will would pass from him to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from him. Then he, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thy will have sent him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that he may testify unto them, these they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, thy, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them, thir let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, the one rose from the dead. That is so true. The Messiah died and was resurrected from the dead, and people still do not read and study his word for themselves today. Why is it important that we read and study his word so we can inherit eternal life? We keep insisting on listening to men and, and not the Most High, who is the giver of life. We have the prophets, Moses, in the Old Testament, and the Messiah in the New Testament still today. These false prophets in these Christian churches today are telling you to not read or study the scriptures of the Old Testament because we are living in modern times. But one cannot even begin to understand the so-called New Testament without the Old Testament as a reference and a guide to understanding the New. When you begin reading a book, do you start at the beginning or go straight to the end? If so, how would that story ever make sense to you or or the ending of that of that matter matter or the ending of that matter if you were to start in the middle or at the end of the book? Another major lie these false prophets state is that you do not have to read and study revelations because it cannot be understood because the most high uses metaphors and symbols but that is due to their own ignorance, laziness, and fear. Just because you can't understand it, stand it does not mean that the Most High will not open up your mind to receive the understanding of that which one seeks to understand in the Revelations, because it is He who gives the understanding to those who is found worthy. I hope these children of Satan can understand this. Revelation 22 and 18 say, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man should take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away the part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So, how can you say that you are a teacher of the true word of the Most High in the Bible when you are completely ignoring or doing away with the Old Testament? Is that not taken away from the Bible? Yes, you are taken away from the Bible and saying things that are not in the Bible. Therefore, you are adding to it. So, I, so if you are sitting in this hell bin church, in these hell bin churches, that is taking away and adding words to the Bible 
and giving your money to help spread their lies that is not in the Bible, you are just as guilty as the person adding and taking away from the Bible, and for that, you will receive the same judgment. Since I was a child, I attended these church, Christian churches until the Most High showed me around 35 years ago. I was in the wrong place. He opened my eyes to the realization that the truth was never being given or taught at these places. I never heard any of these scriptures being brought forth in this lesson today, right, read or taught in any church that I attend, attended during this time. All I heard them preach about was material and monetary gain and tithes. By the way, the pain of tithes had nothing to do with money. This is another lesson for another time. The Bible specifically documents and records that we are to withdraw ourselves from such ministers, preachers, or teachers who claim that gain is godliness. First Timothy verse, chapter 16 verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrow. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 5 and 9 said, Perverting, disputing of men, my corrupt, corrupt minded, and dissolution of the truth. Suppose that gain is godliness, for such withdraw thyself. But godliness and contempt is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certainly we can carry nothing out. Having food and garment, let us be wherewith content, but they that will be rich fall into temptation, sneers, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drowns man in destruction and perdition. So if anyone thinks money or gain is godliness, do not have anything to do with them. The Bible speaks, the Bible is speaks, the Bible speak. this is not right. Luke 6, 25 say, But woe unto you that are rich, for he have received, for you have received your consolation, and you have seen your comfort. Mm -hmm. Mark 10, 25 say, It is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, therefore a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 6, 24 says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon mean money. Money is a, mammon is a spirit that takes over and control many people's minds and body when they become rich. They become greedy, pride, selfish, show no pity for the poor, and rob the poor even if they have billions of dollars because they can never get enough of money and or material things. They strongly believe that money is their lifeline. They forget about who created them and that the Most High have the power of life and death in His hands. And it is he who chooses who lives or dies. And a lot of our sisters and brothers do not have have to be rich to be dealing with dealing in this spirit or for this spirit to gain control over them. I've seen some of my brothers and sisters who work a good job and were promoted to a good position and they begin to look down on their sisters and brothers. Why? Because they're thinking they have made it to the top in this evil world. They're, they are what they like to call blessed, not knowing that Satan gives gifts too, but he gives his blessings to keep you in a slumber so that that spirit of pride, arrogance, and selfishness can obtain a permanent residence. It's sad that some of us get caught up in the illusion that this world is going to last forever. Some of us are living our lives without realizing that this world is going to pass away soon. They feel or should say, they feel or should say, truly believe that they are going to have the last say so say so in where their life is heading in this world and where they will be for etern for eternity revelation 21 one says and i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth passed away and there was no more seas ecclesiastic 5 10 said he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. Your money or increase of things mean nothing to the Most High. It means a lot to Satan because he wants to keep you worship in ser worshiping and serving him on this earth. Job, Job 9.24 say, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Therefore, Satan has the right to give these earthly things to who, whosoever he wants to. 
He even tries to tempt the Messiah to worship and serve him for worldly possession in the earthly king in this earthly kingdom. Matthew 4, verse 8 and 10, 10, again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showed him all the kingdom of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Thus saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy servant. A rich man asked the Messiah, What do it, do it take for a rich man to get into heaven? And this is what the Messiah had to say to him. Mark chapter 10, verse 19. Thou knoweth the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear forth false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy mother and father. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these things have I observed from my youth. Then, then the Most High said unto him, Love him. Then Jesus beholding him. I'm sorry. Then Jesus beholding him, love him, and say unto him, One thing thou lacken, go thy way and sell whatsoever thou havest, and give to the poor, and they shall have treasures in heaven. And thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come and take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grief, for he had great possession. And Jesus looked around about and said unto him, How hardly should they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto him, How hard is it for them that trust in their riches to enter into the kingdom of God? So ask all these ministers and preachers, preachers you have made rich, to give up their riches since they claim they love and serve the Most High. Stop using the Most High people to get rich so that you can feel like you have a place in a world that is doomed. The reason they will not be able to give up all their riches and give it to the poor and follow the Most High is because money and their possessions have become their God. And that is why their message is all about gaining what the world has to offer and not what the Most High has in store for you surrounding eternal life. So who, does, who do you believe? The Most High or your false ministers, preachers, and false prophets who only want your money and time? This is how the Most High feel about the poor man, poor man, or woman. Proverbs nineteen seventeen say, "He that hath pity upon the poor leadeth it, leadeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he repay repay him again." Proverbs fourteen thirty one say, "He that oppresses the poor reproach his maker, but he that honor him have mercy on the poor." Deuteronomy fifteen seven seven say. If there be among you a man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thy heart, nor shut thy hands from thy poor brother. But thou shalt open thy hands wide unto him, and shalt surely learn him sufficient for his need in, in that which he wanteth. Psalms 34, 6 says, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of his trouble. Psalms 14, 12 say, I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the affliction and the right of the poor. Proverbs 12, 19, 19, Proverbs 19, 22 says, The desire of a man is his kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. Do you hear that? You, as being a poor man or woman, is better than those lying ministers that is taking you for all that you have and telling you that you are cursed if you are poor. Job 36, 6 said, He that preserves not the life of the weak, but giveth righteous to the poor. Let, let, me, let me leave this with you to think about. If you are so self-reliant, ask yourself these questions and answer them, and answer them for yourselves. Can you count the hairs on your head? Can you turn your hair white or black? Were you able to determine when you were going to be birthed into this world? What day, time, or year you are going to die? Do you know how you are going to die or even what tomorrow is going to bring in your life or your family's members' lives? Oh, you cannot answer these questions. Let's read who have this knowledge and power in knowing the answers in the beginning and ending to all these questions and more. 
Matthew 5, 36 says, Neither should thy swear by thy head, because thy cannot make one hair white or black. And he, he also said this in Acts 7, 17. Neither is wishing up with man hand, as though he need anything, seeing he gives to all life and breath and all things. Ephesians 1, 11 said, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of his will, who work all things after the counsel of his own will. Most High does whatever pleases him by his own will, not by you paying money and thinking it will happen by your own independence or confidence in yourself. The Most High needs nothing. The Most High needs nothing from you, but for you to repent from your sins and keep his commandments and statutes, for you to receive eternal life in his kingdom. So stop trying to be the Most High by trying to take his place in the hearts and minds of men. You will be cursed and thrown into hell for such spiritual atrocities and betrayal. This warning is so so that a proud and selfish spirit will not take over you. Ezekiel 79 says, They should cast their silver in the streets, and their gold should be removed, their silver, silver, and their gold should not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Most High. They should, they should not satisfy their soul, neither fill their bowl, because it is the, neither fill our bowl, their bowels, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. So, the prosperity gospel cannot be proof of the Most High favor, since it is what the devil promised those who worship and serve him. Shalom, brothers and sisters.